In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of branding your business. Coming up next. Hi, I'm Diet, and welcome to Turtle Creativity, where we make crafting and crocheting easy. I'm really excited to talk to you about branding and what it means for your business and why it is important, especially when we want to craft and crochet like a boss. So without further ado, let's jump right in and talk about this thing called branding. So rolling up my sleeves, getting comfortable, and let's go ahead and have a chat. So business branding, why is that important? It's important because when you stop and think about what is my business brand going to be, you have to ask yourself many different questions. What is my target audience? What will my business image look like? What is the core values of my business? What do I wanna stand for? What emotional connection do I want people to feel when they're dealing with me or my employees or come in contact with the product that I'm selling? All of those things develop into your business brand. And it's important because it lays the foundation for your business and allows for your target audience that you're trying to come and either buy your crafts or your crochet or your paintings or your drawings or whatever it is that you're doing. It is the thing that will attract those people who you're trying to attract to come to you for business. So you have to understand what is my brand and how am I going to use whatever my brand is to market my target audience? How am I going to use my core values, my belief, the emotional connection that I want people to have with me? How am I going to develop that for me to do business? Because all of that is a part of my brand. Now, I have a question that I want to ask you. You ready for it? <laughs> So here's my question. How do you fit in to the industry that you're trying to break into? So if it's crafting, if it's crocheting, if it's soap making, if it's candle making, jewelry making, dress making, whatever it is, how do you fit in to that industry? Because the way that you fit into that industry is a part of your branding for your business. Now, Hold on to that, because I asked you that question. Think about that answer to that question. You got your answer? Now, how do you stand apart? How do you stand out from the rest of the industry? Because how you stand out is your sparkle. It is the reason why I'm gonna come to you instead of the next person who makes handmade items. Your uniqueness is going to come your brand your uniqueness is, is going to what is going to make me say i'm going to come to you to get all of my hand oil paintings done i'm going to come to you for my handmade soap because when i talked to you on the phone you were so friendly I felt like I was connected to you. I felt like I was talking to my best friend. You were so friendly. You use natural oils. I just really, really want to be connected with you. You have created a connection with me. You stand out from the next person down the street so much so that your prices may be more than what I wanted to buy, but I really like you. I'm connected to you. Your sparkle, the thing that you have, makes me say, I want to do business with you. That sparkle is a part of your brand. See, you have to understand the question of why am I doing this and why is my product better than the next person? Now, don't begin to compare yourself to anybody in regards to you're promoting yourself by saying, I'm better than Susan down the street because X, Y, and Z. Mm -mm. See, when you are really sincere about your business, when you are really pouring your love and your, your heart, your soul, all of those things into what you're creating, you don't need to do that. 
See, as, as, as Jasmine would say, you don't need to throw shade. Okay, we're not, I'm not teaching you to throw shade to people. I want to, I want you to stop and think about your sparkle. I want you to stop and think about how do you fit in? How can you compete within your industry? But then how can you stand out? How can you solve a person's problem in regards to that thing that you're selling? Because what, why do we do business and why do we create things? We create things for people who may want it or need it. If I am crocheting hats and scarves, I want to do two things. I want to help people stay warm if the climate is, is cool. And I may also serve a need of, I want you to be fashionable, okay? So you have to figure out what is that need that you're trying to solve because that also helps you understand how do I fit in into the industry. It also helps you understand how do you stand out because my hat and scarf set, maybe I stand out because the the thread that I'm using is import, is imported from, I don't know, some very fancy place. And I take my time to crochet each stitch and I, I, I'm making sure that it is done with care and love. I mean, I do do all that. But that's the thing that makes my product stand out from the next person down the street. And on top of that, more so than just my product, because yes, people do buy your things or will begin to continue to purchase from you for your product, but also people will begin to purchase and buy things because of the emotional connection that you make. Customer service. That's why customer service is so important. I will tell you in a heartbeat that if I do not have good customer service, if I don't feel warm and fuzzy inside when I'm doing business with you, I will cancel the order. I will say, okay, never mind. I'm gonna go down the street. And sometimes me going down the street, I may have to pay more money. I may have to drive further to go down the street. But because your customer service was whack, I'm not going to do business with you. So that's also a part of your brand. You want to be able to understand that I am in business, but I'm building relationships with people. You want to have long-time clients and people who, no matter what is happening, they're always going to think of you for the next scarf or the next painting or the next bath bombs, whatever it is that you do. You're building long-term relationships. You want to build your clientele. You don't want somebody just to come to you for one purchase. You want them to have repeat customers. How do you do that? You do that by standing out from the person down the street. Okay, you feel me? All right, let's go on to the next point that I wanna talk about. So the second thing that I wanted to talk to you about is your logo. Your logo is very important when we're talking about branding. See, your business is like a blank canvas and whatever logo that you select, whether that's writing, just writing, or whether that is a picture image, that is what is the painting that goes onto your canvas. So that every time somebody sees those words together or that picture, they're gonna immediately think about you. Nike, um, Amazon, M McDonald's. Those are some companies that have iconic logos. Apple, an iconic logo. Another thing that you need to think about with your logo is is it adaptable throughout the years as things change and evolve? So for example, Apple, when they first started out, their logo was an apple and it had the different colors on the apple. They wanted to for people to know that, hey, we're Apple and our computers, our systems are awesome because our systems have color. So they wanted to make sure that their logo had those colors onto their image. But as time went on and everybody's computers was within color, Apple figured out how to evolve their logo, but still be able to keep that same image, that same feel to their logo. Can you do that with your logo? 
So when you're thinking about, when you're thinking about what is my brand going to be and how do I want that represented in my words or in my image, think about how can my image transform from 2020 to 2040. You want your image to evolve, but still feel the same. Okay. Okay. Point number three. Now, this point is very important when you're thinking about branding. You cannot be everything to everybody. You're not going to make everybody happy. You, you just, you're not. And when you're developing your brand, you have to realize, okay, who am I trying to target? Because if you do not know who you're trying to target, you're going to try to go for everybody. And when you try to go for everybody, then you miss out on the person that you really, really wanted to service. You have to stop, take the time, write out a plan, and really know who is my audience? Who is the target person that I want to buy my handmade soaps? Who is that person that is going to want your crocheted scarves? Who's that person that is going to come to you for those unique earrings that you make? That's not going to be everybody. So you have to take the time to really understand who is that person that you want to be your repeat customer over and over and over again. Because the reality is, is that some products are just for my generation and some products are for Jasmine's generation. It is a big difference in how you're going to target me and how you would target somebody like Jasmine. And that's where you really take the time to understand who am I providing a service for. And when you have that down pack and you fully understand that, then that's how you can begin to really think about your brand, your branding. How do how do my brand appeal to that audience that I'm trying to get? Then your branding rolls into your marketing. Because see, when you understand who your target audience is, when you understand who make up that age group, who is a part of that demographics, then you know exactly how to market to them. Because again, if you don't know who that is, then you're trying to sell and you're trying to get everybody and you're trying to do everything and it doesn't work. You have to niche down within your niche and then you also have to niche down into the audience that you are servicing to. I'll see you in the next one and subscribe for more.